Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Logan's European Outlook, a late edition today, I'm afraid, and um, we do have a very wet evening, certainly across northeastern England, southern, central, eastern and northeastern Scotland through this evening. We've got an area of low pressure at 975 millibars, according to the latest GFS run, sitting just off the wash, and that is bringing... Um, a pretty strong east wind coming in off the North Sea, feeling rather raw in that wind as well. But it's also piling a lot of moisture as well. As I play through the next 24 to 36 hours, that rain will continue to pound the, you know, the north of England, uh, central southern Scotland, and particularly so up the eastern side of Scotland. So basically through the borders, uh, the Lothians, Fife, Tayside, Aberdeenshire. We're going to see uh, a very wet overnight tonight and through a good chunk of tomorrow, we're going to see that rain continuing along with strong to, to gale force winds coming in from an east to southeasterly direction. So a very, very messy picture to end this working week and then eventually as we go into the weekend, that boundary kind of just kind of fades in place. The area of low pressure itself heads to the north as it fills. And then it's uh, all eyes on the next frontal system that moves in from the west. Clear skies during Friday night into Saturday morning means that we're going to see a frost probably to the west of the Pennines. So England's western portions of, of the Midlands, the southwest, Wales, Northern Ireland, southwest Scotland, we're going to see probably clear skies, light winds and frosty conditions, especially away from urban areas, but not exclusively. Then as we go through in the, the second half of the weekend, we're going to see the next frontal system moving in with a little bit colder air, especially in the mid to high levels of the atmosphere. We're going to see precipitation changing over the snow, believe it or not. Yeah, that's something we haven't made mention of uh, really this season at all. And, you know, when you're getting to the middle portion of November, you would certainly expect to hear about snow, especially over high ground. But that has been pretty absent. Over the next couple of days, by the way, temperatures are going to be struggling to get even much above 10 Celsius. A big turnaround from what we've seen just a few days ago. Remember back to, remember on Sunday, you know, 21.2 degrees at Porth Maddock in Wales, the hottest or warmest uh, Remembrance Sunday on record. It was also the fourth warmest day ever recorded in the British Isles for November. So what a change. But again, when you've got these southwesterly winds coming in and uh, we've got the ingredients in place, it's been so warm uh, for so long, it seems, it's not going to last forever. And this is, of course, the change around to average the slightly below average temperatures as we go through the upcoming weekend and in the early portion of next week. And it looks as if the Atlantic is going to continue to dominate the weather pattern. We get a little break in between systems, clear skies, the winds drop off, frost by night, and then we get the next system moving through. It's an interesting setup, this actually. Notice here I'm showing you the UK version to the, tonight, um, just to kind of shake it up a wee bit so that I'm not showing you the same thing all the time. Notice the two areas of low pressure here. This is, of course, at 2100 UTC on Monday of next week. Notice here these two areas of low pressure. We've got winds coming in from the east around the top of that area of low pressure. Remember what's happening. We're building heights to the north. We're sending the storm track further south. We're seeing winds coming around that, pulling in slightly colder air off the continent, and therefore we're going to increase that chance of seeing snow over the hills. So um, that is certainly making it a little bit more interesting at, at the very least anyway. But these two areas of low pressure, some uh, pretty close together, if you notice their position in the south. This is, of course, the latest GFS run. So, you know, the track, positioning, timing, that's all going to be sub subject to a little bit of question, of course. But you notice here that as we go through the course of Monday and Tuesday, continue to keep those winds coming in from the east, feeling rather chilly as well. Remember that we do have colder air coming underneath that area of high pressure up over Scandinavia. 
So we are fil filtering in colder air east to west. And then, of course, as that meets the systems further south, it may allow a little bit of that colder air off the continent to move in over the top of those areas of low pressure. Look at the bigger picture. Not a great deal of change from what I've been saying for the last few days. This is the setup, of course, as of tomorrow morning. So we've got uh, two areas of low pressure. Of course, we've got the big cold area of troughiness over much of the United States at the moment. Thanks to that area of high pressure over uh, Alaska, if you notice. We've got the, another area of low pressure, up, of course, across Scandinavia. But we do have still an open door to the Atlantic. And of course, er, even though it may be coming from a cold source, i.e. Canada, it's crossing over a couple of thousand miles of warm the normal Atlantic Ocean. So it loses a lot of its sting as it crosses the ocean and, and uh, reaches the British Isles here. May depart northern Canada at minus 30 degrees. But by the time it's reached the British Isles, it's nowhere near as cold as that. So these areas of low pressure continue to move in off the Atlantic through the course of next week, really. All the while, we're seeing that area of high pressure uh, running over the top. But really, folks, until you get that area of high pressure dropping down, so say connecting between the Azores and Greenland, you're not shutting down the Atlantic altogether. So therefore, we maintain a relatively mild pattern unless you shut down the Atlantic. So, as I said in yesterday's video, a negative Arctic Oscillation, negative North Atlantic Oscillation, does not mean and does not guarantee cold within the British Isles here. Really, the ingredients all has to come into place. You can even get, you know, a, a big blocking area of high pressure over Scandinavia. You get winds coming around the, the, the bottom of that high, transporting you know, Siberian origin air westwards. But if you've still got the Atlantic opened up, you could essentially, the Atlantic could win the race basically to reach the British Isles. So in other words, you could have Atlantic air reaching the UK before the cold comes in from the east from Siberia here. So a lot of things have to come together just right for a proper bona fide cold pattern. And of course, with the polar vortex being fairly strong, looks to maintain a fairly strong setup at the moment. You know, even any type of cold pattern can sometimes be a fairly short-lived affair. So active pattern continues. We continue to see a lot of wet weather over the next week or so. And this is all very interesting, of course. And we've had the, the, the wet September, the wet October, now a wet November. And I think even with cooler temperatures, November is going to follow suit of September and October being uh, a very, very warm. It's going to end up being a very, very mild autumn of 2022. That's for sure when all is said and done. So that's it for today. Late edition. Thanks for watching. As always, please drop a comment. Please like. Please share with your friends and family. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. See you again hopefully tomorrow with more. Bye for now.